Hi, it's Dan with EUJuicers.com, coming to you as always from our offices here in the heart of Europe. And this is a follow-up video to a video we filmed about three or four months ago, and that was our comparison video where we tested celery in four different types of juicers. What I want to do today is add this juicer. This is the new Sauna 727 Supreme. You might want to check out our review of it. You can get my thoughts on that. It'll be right up here. And also, I'll have in the links below the um, link to the celery comparison video where I talked about the four different types of juicers. What I want to do here is see how does this fit in to the results there. Now, I want to briefly recap those results of those four different types of juicers. If you want to skip ahead, as always, I've got the timestamps below so you can jump ahead directly to the juicing. So in our comparison, there's four different types of juicers. Basically, you can divide them into high speed and low speed. High speed is centrifugal. The juicer you see everywhere in department stores, we found that to be a good entry level juicer for celery because celery has a high water content. And it gave pretty good results. Uh, the only limitations there are that it's very loud, it's a little difficult to clean with a big screen, and you need to drink the juice right away, otherwise it'll separate. It's not the kind of juicer you would want to get for storing the juice till later. On the other side, we also looked at the three types of slow juicers. That's twin gear and then the two single gear types. Twin gear, we looked at an angel, and that's the juicer to get if you want the absolute highest yield. Um, on the other hand, it is the most expensive by quite a bit. It's a complex machine. It's really for the hardcore juicer, but it does a lot of things really well. And of course, it'll do celery well. Uh, next, we looked at the two single auger juicers, the vertical juicer. We looked at Asana 828, and uh, we found that did a really good job on celery. Great yield it got. Fairly easy to clean, but it had one big drawback, and that was in a vertical juicer, the celery has to be cut into tiny little pieces. So that was kind of the downside. And in the end, we kind of uh, decided our favorite, or my favorite, was the horizontal single auger juicer, like this Sauna 727 Supreme. The advantages of it, we tested a Sauna 707, the little brother to this one, and it, the main advantage of it was ease of use. You don't have to cut the celery beforehand. It's pretty fast. It's the fastest juicer to clean because it's got a little screen. The drawback was it had the lowest yield by about 10%. So if you really need the maximum amount of juice from your celery, you might want to head towards a vertical or if you have the budget, even a twin gear like the Angel. But let's look at this one. Uh, like I said, you can click and look at our review to get real details. But what does this bring to the table? You know, Sana kind of upped their game here. This juicer kind of has all the bells and whistles. It was in development for three years. It has a lot of features. And in terms of how does that affect celery? Well, probably the biggest benefit to this guy is the BLDC motor. It's a brushless motor. It's about three times the price of the motors found in other juicers, but it's really advanced. And it's the first juicer we've come across that allows variable speed. Basically, there's four settings on this dial here. And what it'll do is uh, go anywhere from 40 at speed 1, 40 RPM, which is pretty much slower than any juicer out there. The verticals will run around 45. And all the way to a maximum speed of 120. Typical horizontal juicer runs around 60 to 70. So what that means is if you want to go fast, if you're in a hurry to juice a lot of celery, you can run this. I've tested this. You can run it at speed four and you get your juice really fast, almost as fast as a centrifugal without the big disadvantages of all the foam you get in a centrifugal juicer, without the separation of the juice. So in a way, this is almost the best of both worlds. Again, with all horizontals, they're going to have a little, little less yield, but I want to look today and see how I do and compare it to uh, the juicers we tested before. A couple of other features to point out. One I'll show you at the end. It's got a new locking system. It means it's really easy to clean. There's just one button here to uh, remove this uh, uh, juicing assembly. And there's also this juicing cap, which is pretty handy. What this does, I'm going to open it right now. It's not the kind of thing like in a vertical. Verticals have juicing caps, and that allows you to mix things. That's not something you want to do in a horizontal. There's just not enough room in there. 
you don't want the chance of anything uh, getting into the gasket and maybe leaking in there. But it's super easy uh, to clean because when you take off the juicing assembly of a typical horizontal, you've got to put your hand under there because it's going to drip as you go to the sink. With this, you can close it and it makes uh, dripping gone entirely. Also, then you can fill it with water to rinse it out a lot easier. Basically, Sonnet has designed this juicer to be powerful, flexible, but also the easiest to use. Even uh, up here with the hopper, you've got a standard hopper here, but you've also got like a vertical stew. You've got a big, deep bowl kind of tray here. I even tested this juicer earlier this morning by cutting the celery just like I do with a vertical, just to see how it would do. And um, I recorded the yield. I'll give you that at the end of the video here. But let's start up right now. I've got, just like before, 800 grams weighed out of celery. Now we're filming this in the middle of winter, which isn't the best time to get celery. Just like with carrots, celery is best if it's bigger. You want the thickest stalks you can because the center of the celery does have the highest water content. That means a smaller stalk of celery will have uh, more surface area to the interior part. The, the ratio of the interior to the surface area is lower, which means you're juicing more skin and less of the juicy part. These are kind of medium size. I looked around this morning to find the best I could. They should do okay. What I'm gonna do here is just run it. I'll play around with the speeds a little bit, but I think I'll run it at speed three. That's 90 RPM. That's a little faster than a typical horizontal. That means this should be quite quick. I've got a timer here and I wanna see how quickly it goes. So I'll start it up and here we go. So I've been running it at speed three. It's a pretty quiet motor as well. I'm gonna try it at speed four, just see how it goes. I've tested it at speed four and it's really fine. So here's max speed. I even tested it uh, the other day at speed two and it was basically self-feeding. Again, it depends on the size of the celery, the water content. The firmer ones will self-feed a little more easily. You can see it's kind of pulling it in there. It's got a new auger design, and the fins of the auger are wider. That means there's more room for it to grab the celery. When I sing about this, it's not ever gonna happen with celery, but it's got an auto reverse. I've had it kick in once with testing carrots. Basically, if something jams, it will turn the motor reverse automatically, send those jam pieces back, then it will send it forward again. It'll try that a few times if you have a jam. Now, this time's not accurate because we were filming some detail shots in there. I was stopping to talk. I've got 228. I think at speed four, it probably could be done in close to a minute, actually, because those you saw at the end there, they were just flying through. Theoretically, the benefit of running it at a slower speed is that as you're uh, pushing the celery through at a higher speed, you're pushing it really fast in there. And if you go too fast, the pulp doesn't have anywhere to go and it will kind of start coming out the back. Sometimes you'll see it coming up here. It didn't at all in this test. It might be uh, to do with the celery, but it could mean a slightly pulpier juice at a higher speed. That's the trade-off, a slightly clearer juice and a slightly higher yield at say speed two. So what this does is it gives you the flexibility if you're in a hurry, you can go fast like a centrifugal without the drawbacks of a centrifugal. Now, what I want to do now is measure it. One thing I'd, I'd like you to notice here is this juice cap. One benefit is I'm going to take this juice cup out. Now, normally with a horizontal, you take the juice cup out and you've got to put something under there. Uh, you put another cup or you put a towel or something here. You can just close the cap and you don't have to worry about any drips. So what I want to do is check the yield. Now, in the last test, our horizontal got around just under 500 milliliters out of 800 grams of celery. Twin gears get a whole lot more, around 650. 
the vertical got around 550, and like I said, a little under 5 for the Sauna 707. I want to strain out any pulp. I was running it fast, so that means some of the pulp might have come back in there. Some of those long fibers that you get from celery. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit, maybe a teaspoon worth of pulp there. Not much. And then I want to look at the yield. See, if this is right, we'll get a detail shot of this, but it looks to me like it's over 550. From this side, it almost looks like 600. From looking down here, it, I would say 560, 570. We'll know for sure on the detail, which is excellent, actually. I'm surprised uh, for a horizontal. That's the highest I've seen, and that's all right up there with the vertical, uh, beyond the centrifugal. So I, I'm impressed, especially after filtering out the pulp. One reason for that, I did have this celery sitting in a bowl of water. I cut it this morning. I like to put things in water just to keep them fresh. It's possible the celery sucked up a bit of that water just to add a bit more, but still, that's quite good. Now, one last thing I want to show you before I give you my results is, um, first of all, this whole cleaning thing. Most horizontal juicers, you have a collar. It's a two-handed operation. You turn the collar, hold this, rotate the whole juicing drum. This has got a little button here that releases it, and it's actually a one-handed operation. I didn't close the cap all the way. There's a bit of drip. So it's really easy to put it on and off. It's just this button. When you put it on, it just snaps into place. And then I'd like to show you, that's kind of what it looks like on the inside afterwards. Uh, cleaning is super easy, just like a Sauna 707. It's, there's only three parts to clean besides the drum. You've got the cap here, and then there is the screen, which is actually quite clear right now. And one thing about this screen that is different, um, it has the stainless steel front part here, but the back part, which on other juicers is plastic, it actually has a stainless steel, we call it a wing screen. This is what filters out the pulp. It just means there's less plastic contact for juice and more stainless steel. So I'll put those in here. And then there's just the auger, which is coming out clean anyway. Celery doesn't tend to clog juicers anyway. And one other thing I want to show you before I clean this up and then come back to you with my final thoughts is one thing sauna is known for, which you've probably noticed with the pulp container, they like to put in premium accessories. This tall stainless steel pulp container, you see it, it it's not plastic coated chrome or chrome coat, coated plastic, it's solid stainless steel. And this glass is what comes with it as uh, the juicing glass, basically, and this is actually Bohemian Crystal. This is made in a little uh, handmade workshop up in the mountains in the Czech Republic, and it's a real high-quality glass. holds about 500 milliliters. So I'm going to pour this in here. And I'm going to clean this up, and then I'll give you my thoughts where I think this fits in in that whole video that we filmed last time. So see you in a moment. So it took about two minutes to clean this up, just like any horizontal. It's fast and easy. There's just a few parts to clean. And the screen is so small, it just takes a little brushing, and it's, the screen's clean really fast. What I've got here, this is what I juiced this morning. I took about, um, well, exactly 800 grams of celery, and I chopped it into little pieces because I wanted to see, first of all, how easy it is to feed with this new hopper. It was really easy, but chopping takes a while, like with a, a vertical. And I had got about 550 milliliters. What I got here, we checked the camera, it was between 580 and 590. One reason for that is these celery stalks were slightly bigger. I brought the biggest stalks in for the video. These were slightly smaller. Also, these had been sitting in water. That could have affected it. But overall, what did I think? I'm actually really impressed. I didn't expect really much more than 500 uh, milliliters out of here. and. But this got more than the vertical. The latest generation vertical got 570 to 580. This got around 580 to 590, puts it right up in there. The big weakness of horizontals with celery has always been yield. They're the lowest yield, but as you see here, I matched it or did slightly better than a vertical. Just still falls short of a twin gear, but again, a twin gear angel is more than twice as much as one of these, even the top of the line sauna supreme. 
So I'd say overall, uh, this would be my choice of juicer for celery. Also, horizontals do a lot of other things better. Check out our review. You'll, you can see a lot of that. And that should wrap things up. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan with eujuicers.com, and I'll see you next time.